Hello, Narnig here. Welcome back to Path of Exile. So, in the last episode we made it to the crematorium. But then I discovered that this is one of the areas where there's a trial of ascendancy. So, rather than tacking it hastily onto the end of an episode, let's dedicate an episode to uh, the catacombs. Well, what am I saying? Not the catacombs. Crematorium. They both start with a C, so they sound similar. That's my excuse and I'm sticking with it. So given that this is a rather fiery area, I had a brief look at the gear I had in my inventory and boosted my fire resistance a little bit. Well, it's also boosted by my endurance charges. And I equipped a ruby flask. So what I need... I have the resistances. Because fire is basically the only resistance that, that still has some issues. So, getting close to leveling up again. And once we level up, we have a new weapon to equip. That should massively boost our damage. Which is nice, given that piety is of course also waiting for us at the end of this level. Okay. So, Sunder gained a level. So, we're now at 254. That is boosted to 258. So, it didn't really gain a lot of extra damage. But, I don't think that's the entire point of leveling up Sunder. So, we gained a point. We can spend that, of course. We're going to slowly start on boosting our mace damage and completing most of the wheel. So, 270 DPS. That actually moved the damage by a bit. So, if we open up our inventory, I already have this one uh, pre-loaded. I've got a melee physical that's going to be attached to our heavy strike. So, our heavy strike is going to be even, well, heavier to strike. So, 270 becomes 363. That's a massive upgrade. If I ever saw one. So this one is go, going back into the box for future characters that I hope I don't need. But when I do need them, I'll be glad that I actually saved that hammer. Because it's a good hammer. It, it served me well. So, let's do some exploration. Now, let's also equip the heavy strike we just... Shovel around and let's do 667 DPS. So we can nearly one hit Cinder Elementals. Normally you have to wail on them for quite a bit. Hmm. <coughs> Got a feeling this is not where we have to be since we explored all the edges. So let's explore the other side of the map. Oh, keep forgetting. We have a totem. I can smash things. Boom. Ooh, a cobalt jewel. And a wisdom scroll. That seems useful. Chance to block spells with staves. And minions have elemental resistances. Well, I don't really care. But we can put it in the box and reroll it as needed. Ooh, bronze monograph. What does it have to say? On the night of a thousand ribbons, our finest city burned. It burned with fires lit by cruelty and neglect. It burned with shame for giving the title of emperor to a man who did not deserve it. That sounds grim. Okay, so, burning ground. And they are these emulators that I just saw a skeleton drop out of. That's also gonna be fun. Okay. Let's get through it while the ground is not hot. Right. Lever opens up the next door. Put up a totem here. Interesting thing, these ember claimants are not burning, even though the ground actually looks rather burny. Hitting a lever, let's move to the other side. 
and down just to defend ourselves against what comes out. We can actually put the totem up, but as you see, it burns down rather quickly. So, let's take that one out as well. Next. Uh, let's actually test. Oh, okay. So, that burns down rather quickly. Admittedly, I don't have a lot of fire resistance, so... It would actually be interesting to do a before and after with the ruby flask. Just to see if the, the damage is affected by fire resistance or not. Because that way you know what to give for it. So, let's stand in it. Ruby flask. That significantly slowed down the damage we were taking, actually. And if you then drink a potion, you can actually tank through it. That's good to know. That's very good to know. I mean, I guess that's one of the reasons why they have the trials in addition uh, to this just being extra content but of course it also allows you to test these mechanics in isolation so once you face them in the labyrinth allow where you are on the time present tempered oh. by the flames of the past so if you're in the labyrinth where you're on time pressure to ex uh, to finish it uh, on time in order to get a spot on the leaderboard or things like that then you don't have time to do detailed analysis of the mechanics, so that might also be a reason why they chose to do these trials. So you can actually just test them in isolation and you don't get overwhelmed. For example, the, the puzzle mechanics in earlier areas, they can actually be rather tricky. Uh, especially the one with the, the spears that come out at uh, even and odd time so you actually have to time your movements while fighting monsters on the floor that's uh and that can actually be lethal if you even get slightly distracted and mess up your timing i was uh, playing with some friends yesterday with other characters and we actually lost one of our group members in exactly that situation other situations being parentis chests they can actually be a rather a lethal so if you're playing through the content, be extra wary with the the parentis caches. Because the monsters in there, they use skills that you normally don't see. And uh, they can be rather lethal. In maybe in areas where you don't expect monsters to be dangerous, suddenly you have rather dangerous foes. dropped an ice nova that's kind of funny for coming from a uh, fire aligned monster oh wait we can just uh, go through at any point okay so cell block oh oh hey there's staircases there that might actually be piety Or not, just a, just an area. And there is a horrendous cache out there. Horta is the knee breaker. So that's the first unique guardian with some body backup. Right, let's uh, explode his bodies first. And accidentally we also killed the named one. Okay, not gonna cry over that. And we get 15 horrendous coins. That's uh, slowly, slowly increasing the number of times. Let's see, Iron Grief, that's of course a downgrade. Pfizer Salads. Yeah, that's still not better than what we got. And these are just side areas. Okay. Move up there. Ooh, Opa Valkyrie. So one of the things I did is I moved the extra coins I had and put them in my shared stash. So that way I can share it between characters. But it's also, if you lose a hardcore character, you leave the Parandus League and you go to standard softcore. Where Parandus coins don't do you any good. So keeping your coins on your character exposes them to being lost. So keeping them in your shared stash is actually a, 
a safe way to keep your coins. And when you encounter Kadiro Perenzineers or something interesting, you can always just portal to town, grab the coins you need, and get back. So that's a, a pro tip for safety to be realistic, aren't you, brute? What? I don't think I like you anymore. Do you even feel pain? Enough of this! Alright, that was her. Both gone. So I guess he was impressed by my... Brutishness? So, let's see. Hello, the Maramoa. We get a jump from you. Anger, Warlord's Mark, Determination, Vengeance, and Punishment. So, Vengeance is actually an interesting one because it doesn't require blocking. It's whenever you get hit. And I, well, I do get hit if I do a lot of uh, damage back. My current standard DPS is 276. Mostly physical, a little bit of cold from my amulet. So that's gonna do quite some damage back. But I don't actually have anything to attach it to right now. Determination is gonna reserve 50% of my mana. That's uh, I mean, boosting armor, fine, but 50% of my mana, that, that feels a bit, uh, a bit high. Warlord's Mark. That's uh, yet another way to gain endurance charges and makes enemies easier to be stunned. So that's actually something I am interested in. So I'm gonna grab it. General Gavisius demands. So we can uh, sell some of the things we got. So sledgehammer. That's what we just leveled out of. So this is gonna be a downgrade. So we can just sell it. Sell all the things we don't need. Stay out of the shadows. Let's see. A bracelet. Now we're gonna hand that in. This we're gonna do something with at some point. Uh, yes, I know that's very vague. So this one goes onto the pile. Do I have something for jewels yet? Yeah, we have something for jewels. Let's see. Red gems. Then we put the blue ones here with the blue ones on top. And this is level 17, so we stash it away. Stash it away, away. And we keep that for when we need it. Let's talk to Clarissa to get the keys. Thank you. Watch yourself. Speak with Gregor. Tread carefully, exile. Okay. Let's have some fun. Uh, also, if you're wondering about which of the ascendancies you or of the trials you've done or not in a difficulty when you're especially when you're switching characters clicking the the plug here will show you each of the six oh, we got two more to go so one of them being the catacombs and one of them being the hedge maze um yeah we need to go out here and then use the key to get into the sewers So it's probably once we upgrade our boots or helmets and get some more sockets, then we will start using Warlord's Mark. Until then, we'll just go with what we got. It's not like we need it to survive. It's just a, it's a nice bonus to have. Copper plate, that's a downgrade from the war plate. Okay, we can continue. You and a moment of your time. Furichi. I haven't seen you yet, that's good. So we actually have to wander about a bit because I do want to get him to town. Because he is closer than uh, Hagen to the waypoint, so he's more efficient to sell stuff to. Similarly, Vegan is also very close to the waypoint. And he's also very useful just to sell stuff to, even if you don't actually do a lot of his quests. Oh, let's kill the queen. Long live the queen. Ooh, unique iron gauntlets. Well, iron gauntlets being six armor things, but they look pretty cool. 
Loctonial Caress. Extra attack speed, extra cast speed, a bit of extra armor, reduced maximum mana, and conduit. So, conduit being. Let's see, it was somewhere. There, share endurance charges, frenzy, and power charges with nearby party members. This is pretty cool if you're playing a build that actually gathers charges and you don't feel like or you don't have the skill points available to actually do something with it. That's a bladefall, that means there's gonna be a horrendous uh, thing nearby. Ooh, they're in a bubble. Fun. Here, let me just explode all of you. Hehe. <laughs> Totem playing a game of whack-a-mole, but whatever gets resurrected. <laughs> and that was that. Coin, please. Let's see. Four, four. Another one. Five and five. Oh, that's 19. Yet another record. Keep setting new records. Very happy with that. I want more. More coins. So I wonder now that we actually have coins in the game, if the game's economy is going to change from everything being expressed in exalts to using actual coins. Okay, so we're actually now using Sunder correctly to keep our endurance charges up against yellow mobs. So that is actually pretty promising. <coughs> If I were Verici's target, where the heck would I hide? Oh. Upside of clearing a level again is all the horrendous caches, of course. Let's see, put the totem slightly closer to where they respawn. That way we can just uh, let the totem manage that. Good. Grand Mana Flask. That's a, I think that's a new one. A unique Grand Mana Flask even. And it's also you get less coins because there was a unique in there, which is uh, pretty cool. Zerfi's last breath. And that's something you have to identify because it's a unique. Awesome. Consumes uh, some charges, 21 mana. That's actually on par with what I have if I hadn't boosted my skill. Skills used during flask effect grant 800% of mana cost as life. That's pretty cool. So this is 21 mana per second, which is actually enough to sustain me just sundering all the time. But if I use, I spend 12 mana casting this and I get 8 uh, volt back, every attack with sunder is 100 life restored. This is epic. I like it. I really, really like it. This is the first unique flask I found that's actually useful. As most of the other unique flasks, they they always ask you to make interesting, I'm just gonna say interesting trade-offs. Or build half of your build around them. And this one is just a drop-in replacement for a mana flask and it makes it more awesome. Okay. That's it though. Where the heck is that assassination target? Here, target, 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 target. Not in the crematorium. Oh, uh, Perpetuus is up there. Or Perpetus. Hello there, buddy. It's also slightly more difficult than usual to gauge how uh, full that thing is because it's just so uh, artistic. One of the upsides of this build being rather mana hungry and um, using a mana flask to recover it is that I'll be having the, the life uh, steal or the life gain effect up rather often. Boom. Okay. 
Okay, so now the monsters come out of the woodworks when I want to actually just assign my skill point. So, more damage. So we go from 359 to 380. That's another 20 points of damage. Boom. 708 damage per second. <sighs> and a corrupted area. Okay, interesting. Completely, this episode's going completely different than I was expecting. There's so many extra fun things to, to do. So, monsters fire two additional projectiles. We just have to do this. And after that, we still have to find the assassination target. And then, next episode, we're going to go sewer diving. Massive shrine. As if I weren't brutish enough. I'm not too heads taller. Also, AOE is larger, so that's going to be fun for explosion. Oh, great helmet. No, that's not the kind of helmet I'm looking for. Great helmet sounds like something a marauder would want to use, but it's actually a Templar thing. Okay, that's one building. <coughs> Next. And we're back to our regular size. How much damage does Leap Slam do? No, not a lot. On the other hand, it doesn't really have to. File letter, that means the boss is near. That's, uh, that's the Sunburst Queen. Let's uh, deal with the ads first and then we'll deal with the Queen. actually does a lot of fire damage which is my weakness whoa that was a burning arrow okay you can't actually get behind here oh you can here okay uh oh she's dead <laughs> oh, this build is so overpowered it's awesome it's so much fun i actually can't wait to get earthquake I think that's just gonna get it, blow it even further through the roof. Alright, so, recap. We've explored this bit of the map. Fritsch is there. And the map doesn't go further to the left. So where the heck is his target then? Hmm. Where are you hiding your target, Mr. Furici? Where? Well, we haven't explored the final bits here. It's not behind it. But that's... Or maybe it spawned at the beginning of the map. That's actually a rather realistic approach. Okay, let's uh, use the waypoint here to get back to town and then enter from a town. That, that's one of my main annoyances with the, the master quests or the, yeah, the master quests is that they, the moment you pick up the quest, it's when it become active. Um, so in, in case of like Torah missions, it's if she have the den, the den is going to be on there, but you can't go in. But if she has monsters, they spawn behind you. Um, a little bit here, just to double check. Yeah. Um, it's probably on that square over there. So in the case of Ferrici missions, target is. See, I explored this. There's, well, like 5% of the map that I have previously explored. And that's where he chose to spawn my opponent. I cannot carry this. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Ferrici. On the other hand, we uh, did find 
too unique, right? So I can't ex complain too much about it. I shouldn't complain about it too much. I mean, I'm Dutch. I can complain about anything. Uh, Zervi's last breath. You are awesome. Okay, well, I'm going to end the episode here. In the next episode, we're going to go into this sewer grating over here. I'm actually going to open it already. So it's like a, like a cliffhanger. What's going to be down there? So uh, see you again next time. Bye-bye.